everyone, Bernard here with the latest Citizen Vlog and it's a city past and it's a moment in time so today join me as we travel back to the 11th of August 1994 there we go and a certain Mr Rollcastle, a bit of a shock this one at the time please if you're new to this Citizen uh, channel please push that uh, subscribe button and push the notifications make, you no make sure your notifications are set to Public, so you don't miss out on any of these little history vlogs or if you watch my uh, latest vlogs on what's happening in City's world now the city presence uh, please uh, please push that subscribe button and enjoy more content and everything's in the links below etc yeah uh, David Rollcastle we got the shock didn't we on the 11th of August 1994 that uh, he was to leave Manchester City and join Chelsea um, obviously, Paul Hinz summed it up in the, uh, I think, the Manchester Evening News. Uh, some of it entry meant exit Davids, exit Davids. So yeah, obviously there's a lot of buzz, a lot of buzz. <laughs> I didn't even plan to say that. A lot of buzz about Nicky Summerby coming to to the club, and it sort of uh, left City unable to put Mr. Rowcastle in a spot because obviously in some of the friendlies he played, etc., he was uh, getting replaced by Nicky Summerby and various things, and uh, it wasn't quite working out. So Paul Haynes obviously wrote in the in the evening news on the um, after the 11th of August statement. Uh, David Rowcastle became the first victim of the first competition for places at Main at Manchester City today when he left Main Road in a shock 1.25 million transfer to Chelsea. Rowcastle agreed to move back to his native London because he knew that he was unlikely to figure prominently in manager Brian Horton's senior plans this season. Explains Horton, we have an abundance of midfield players and I think that Rocky suspected he was going to be one of the odd men out. Some players are quite happy to be part of the senior squad but I don't think this would have been the case with David. He was just upset he was left out for a couple of pre-season matches. It is hard to see where I could have accommodated him in the system I have in mind with Nick Summerby the wide midfield man out on the right. The offer came out of the blue yesterday afternoon. I felt it was good business, but the final decision was left to Rollcastle. He was happy with the deal offered to him, so the move suited both us and him. He was happy. Uh, the 27-year-old Lewisham-born midfielder arrived last December in the straight swap deal, which took David White to Ellen Road. And of course, that was another little shock, wasn't it? I mean, it was only the previous December, so there wasn't much of a gap, was there, between that, really? And there's a little piece from Brian Brett, in the Manchester Evening News, obviously, um, <coughs> what happened? White joins Leeds in the two million swap. Rollcastle is a new blue. So this was back in this was back in December, obviously, of the uh, previous year. Um, Brian Brett wrote: Brian Horton today made a sensational two million pound pre-Christmas suit by swapping David White for Leeds United star David Rollcastle. The Manchester City manager made his dramatic move to boost morale for the club and their suffering fans as the Blues slid into relegation freefall. For White, it means the end of a love-hate relationship with the fans. He made a stunning impact with his pace and drive to win an England cap, but his form has declined along with cities in recent seasons. Horton said, We have watched David Rowcastle for some time and we are delighted to land a quality player. He has not figured as much as he wanted to at Leeds after his move from Arsenal. Uh, many successful years there. This gives him the opportunity to kick-start his career again. So there you go. That was a sort of shock there, wasn't it? And then we were followed by another shock, obviously, in August with his with his uh, leaving City so soon, obviously, uh, to join to join Chase Chelsea. I mean, he actually played in the pre-season friendlies. He wasn't featured in the team. Uh, this the Manchester City uh, squad for the 94-95 season. He's not anywhere in there. But he had played in some of the friendlies uh, in the Isle of Man, uh, Norway. Um, and uh, see him featured in the in the wonderful black and black and red kit, um, obviously on the on the in a, a win before Falk SK SK of of Norway, and he also featured three days on the eighth of August, three days before he moved. He also featured in a pre season friendly at uh, at Portsmouth, a two a two one defeat at Portsmouth. Uh, but by City's prestigious game against Feyenoord, that was obviously we were invited Feyenoord European European competition to Main Road. Uh, but before that, friendly on the thirteenth of August, nineteen ninety four, Roll Rollcastle has has left. Uh, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, as as in the case of, of these things in football, coincidences always happen, don't they? And uh, City's fourth game of this season was was to be um, against Rollcastle with his new club at Chelsea on the thirty first of August 1994 and obviously there's a feature in the Chelsea programme with David Rollcastle and it, uh, the comments are David Rollcastle 
David Rollcastle has had this evening's clash booked in his diary ever since the fixtures were first announced. The only difference is he expects to be playing a Manchester City shirt, not running out in Chelsea colours. Despite his vast experience, a quietly spoken and articulate midfielder admits that the last three weeks have been a whirlwind. The move to Chelsea came completely out of the blue, he admits. One minute I was gearing up for a trip back to Arsenal on the opening day of the season. That was our first game of the season for City. The next, Brian Horn was telling me that he had agreed a deal with Chelsea. Rollcastle arrived in London on the Thursday evening and was in Spain on the Saturday for Chelsea's pre-season friendly in Valencia. And he went on to say uh, in the piece as well at the end of the piece, despite his uh, went on to go on with despite his limited opportunity at Leeds and a lightning pit stop at Main Road, Rollcastle remains philosophical about the past two years. I enjoy my time at both clubs, Leeds and City. There was never any question of a rift between myself and the managers. I like to feel that at City I helped them stay up during some troubled times and I have nothing but good memories of the club, the fans and the City. Brian Horton explained to me that the deal with Chelsea was purely business. I've been around too long to take these things personally anyway and I hope that the fact I've signed a four-year contract at Chelsea shows my commitment to the club. So yeah, there you go. Um, no surprise, is it? Uh, what happened in that game? Yeah, um, with a 9 out of 10 performance, um, yeah, Rollcastle's Chelsea um, beat a sort of an attacking City 3-0. It wasn't as bad as it seemed apparently, but uh, I didn't go to that one, I must admit. But uh, we lost 3-0 at Chelsea with a Rollcastle-inspired performance. Uh, journalist Pat Sheehan uh, had him as the star man in the game, Rollcastle, and said he ran the show and gave him a 9 out of 10 rating. And he went on to went on to the old Rocky Revenge um, headline, didn't we, that we got there. So let's just have a quick look at the uh, Rocky Revenge headline. David destroys City to make it a dream double. David Rowe, this is Pat Sheehan. David Rowcastle tasted sweet revenge after destroying former club City at Stamford Bridge. Rocky was a knockout as he powered Blues to their first, their best league start for 30 years. This win was Chelsea's third in a row and they are one of only three Premiership sides with a 100% record. Uh, it completed a memorable four days for Old Castle after Chelsea turned over another of his former clubs, Leeds, so they beaten Leeds as well. Uh, delighted Chelsea boss Glenn Hoddle said, Rocky will go home, put his feet up and feel quite contented with himself. He started, he, he's elated because he has played a big part in putting us where we are this season. David will get better and better. He has the ability and our experience. He left London a young lad but has come back much wiser. What he has gone through makes anyone a better character. So obviously that was quoting from Pat Sheen on the on the game where Liverpool, uh, Liverpool, Chelsea defeated us three uh, nil. Uh, sadly for Old Castle, his career sort of petered out with injury, etc., and he never quite reached the heights. Obviously, he'd reached at Arsenal previously, and uh, sadly um, diagnosed with with uh, a cancer, um, very aggressive cancer. I think it, by the year two thousand, uh, it, it'd been he'd been told even though he was under under chemo chemotherapy, he was having that. That he uh, by the year two thousand, he was told it was terminal, and sadly, we lost. Uh, um, David Rocky Rollcastle on the 31st of March 2001 at just the age of 20 at 33 absolutely absolutely horrible please rest in my best wishes to all concerned and obviously those memories a long time ago but it doesn't make any difference does it my um, commiserations and uh, sincerest uh, love to everyone connected with Mr Rollcastle rest in peace anyway that's the end of this uh, little moment in time. I hope you enjoyed it. Not a long one today. I just thought it was a little bit important and uh, a great play. He wasn't with us long, was he? He was only with us a few months, but uh, he left City. It was a bit of a special time. He, he played some great games. I think he played about 23 games on the trot, I think, for City. Uh, scored a couple of goals as well. And I think most fans uh, sort of were sorry to leave him go and remember him fondly. And he is a he was a great loss, and obviously to say he never never reached the heights that he had at Arsenal. But a fantastic player, it's privilege privilege to watch him. I did watch him in action. It's a great privilege to watch him in action for for our great club, Manchester City. David Rowcastle, moment in time, eleventh of August, nineteen ninety four. He left us. He left us to sign for Chelsea. Unfortunately, he's left us since then as well, hasn't he? Which is a great shame. Anyway. 
Thanks for watching. Please check all my little link links if you want to follow me on Twitter. And please, if you're more into Facebook and you don't really do Twitter, please uh, just search for Bernard Deneen. You'll find me on Facebook on there. And if you get a chance to look at my little website, moviegamenostalgia.com, that'd be fantastic. All rare DVDs, movie posters from the 1990s and 2000s, and some board games on there as well. So if you get a chance to have a look on there, thumbs up to you. Anyway, thanks for watching today. Whatever you're going to do the rest of the day, have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your family. And let's all look after each other. And hopefully you'll join me again very, very soon for another citizen vlog of some sort. This is Bernard saying goodbye for now. Thanks for watching.